I have a tattoo of Oz, the movie <gasps> Oz, uh, for, for the movie you had just started. in. Whoa! <laughs> a tattoo! Yeah, yeah, there you go. So uh, I wanted to ask you, if you guys could tattoo something from a movie, what would you tattoo? Oh my god. <laughs> In honor of the name of the film, Day One, is there something you've learned on the day one on the first set you stepped into that oh. you get to apply to every single set you have been? I that love day? that question. <laughs> one of the first things I learned was sort of get over it and just relax. It was kind of, you know, the first movie I did was with Nick Cage yep. and there's, he carries a lot of weight and cultural significance and you're like, oh gosh, I'm walking onto a set where I'm gonna direct this guy. <laughs> But then you get there and it's just, okay, it's, I'm gonna direct this guy. Like he needs my guidance. Uh, we need to talk about this character. We need to make this happen. So let's do it in a way that feels focused and respectful and not let it get to you. So kind of just relax was the first thing I learned. And, and that trickles out to the rest of the set then. Then everyone just kind of chills out a little bit. And you, I think you just get better work that way. Uh, don't have a heavy lunch. Okay, that's really good. I learned that day one of my first job. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought, oh, just look at all this. Just <laughs> eat all of it, and then, yeah, it hits two o'clock and you're crawling. <laughs> I was, the first set, time I stepped on a film set, I was a PA. Okay. So um, I was not having the film experience, I wasn't having the actor experience. I would say, say hello. Oh, that's, that's nice. Say hello to people. Be nice. Yeah. Yeah. I keep wondering when they announced this film that what would have happened if they would uh, premiere this film first and how would dictated the rest of the films would have been different somehow. Oh, yeah. So do you guys uh, remember a time in your career where you read something about a character you were going to portray, maybe a, de a little detail that changed your perspective uh, of the way you, you were going to portray that character? Oh yeah, that's a good yeah. question. I remember when I played 12, when I did 12 Years a Slave and I yeah. played Patsy, um, uh, I was doing my research and I learned that uh, enslaved girls would make dolls out of corn husk. Okay. And then I thought, ooh, what if she made dolls out of corn husk? And I told the director about it and they provided me with corn and I made my own dolls. Oh, wow. And it really did, like, it became a central part of my understanding of that character. Oh, well, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. What about you, Joseph? I've just finished a film recently, actually, yeah. where um, I was playing a, a real person. I just finished um, a film called Warfare with Alex Garland. We were playing uh, Navy SEALs in that, and I had the uh, honour of meeting the man that I was portraying. Um, and it grounds your uh, perception or your interpretation of someone. I guess this is only specific to playing someone real, but mm. this is just mm -hmm. in my immediate memory right at the moment. Um, and just listening to the cadence of his voice and the way that he, uh, his stoicism right. was uh, very impactful and definitely, I hope, has influenced the way that I, yeah, I played him. We can help each other. We have to get out of the city. to talk to you about uh, two shots from uh, this film. It's a beautiful shot. I believe the first one is kind of the, your Jurassic Park shot. It's a small circle with the, the monster kind of creeping out of the, of the small circle of a window. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I want to, to talk to you about it. What uh, those shots of horror adventure movies that really inspired you to become a filmmaker? Ooh, that's, that's really interesting. I was a big Sam Raimi guy growing up. Awesome. Um, one thing I loved, I loved the first Spider-Man movie. Yes. Uh, the first two because... They, he used a lot of his horror language in those, right. in those movies. Like, I mean, if you look at the scene where Doc Ock yeah, wakes like, up in the yeah, hospital right. and he's like, it's, it, it, it's, I mean, he was just a crash course in what, and like what a director can do and what yeah. you can do with a specific eye. Um, so I know those aren't really horror movies, but seeing how those elements can be used to serve other types of stories was really valuable because I didn't really approach this as a horror movie. Like there are scary right. things in it, but I approached it as a drama where there's scary stuff happening and there's monsters and that's part of the reality of the world. Um, and it should be scary at times because our characters are scared, but right. it's not just scary for the sake of making people uncomfortable. 
you're right. And uh, the, the second shot is one, it was, it's, it's a tracking shot of, of Frodo, uh, where he's chasing a rat. Yeah. And for the rat, kind of, Frodo is a monster. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to ask you, what does that say about the universe? What's the real monster uh, in this universe? I mean, I, I, think, I think that's sort of up for interpretation. I think right. one, one little thing we play with in this film is, you know, what we allude to sort of, what are the monsters doing here? What are they doing with people? Um, and, you know, you see them interact a little more uh, almost as like a society. And, uh, you know, these are just predators who have come and found a place where right. there's easy prey. Um, and there's a simplicity to that that's kind of beautiful but also terrifying because we're not used to being right. easy prey. Um, and yeah, I think a, a cat chasing a mouse is, is exactly that same feeling. Um, and we portray it in kind of a sweet way, but it's not that different from what's going on. It's the end of days. No more people. No more New York. No more nothing. I have a tattoo of Oz, the movie <gasps> Oz, uh, for, for the movie you had just started. in. Whoa! A tattoo! <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. So uh, I wanted to ask you, if you guys could tattoo something from a movie, what would you tattoo? Oh my god. <laughs> um, my favorite okay. films growing up were the Lord of the Rings films. Yeah. So okay. I guess some kind of ring, maybe, if I was to get a... Tattoo of a film, it would probably be something like that. That's good. That's a good one. How about you? <sighs> well, okay. I would maybe go with something no from. Um, <laughs> have you seen the film Pumpkin Pie? Uh, no, I who directed that? that? I don't know who directed it, but I probably ha I would do a pumpkin pie. Oh, that's interesting. That's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> when, was that, when was that made? I don't know. I watched it when I was really little. <laughs> okay. well, was it made when you were little, or was it kind of older? Or? It was a much, oh, it was much older film. What happens? Uh, maybe it's just like a Kenyan thing. I don't know. Uh, what happens the, in it? The name, yeah, what happens in it? <laughs> <laughs> Are there monsters in pumpkin pie? <laughs> I'm just gonna look for that film right away. Please do, yeah. please do look for it. It's incredible. It was a comedy. There were no monsters. Okay, oh, okay great. Yeah. It's, well, guys, it's funny. It's funny. It's, I, I bet. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Okay. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. And really nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Pleasure to meet you. All right. Thank you.